Ready, go. Alrighty, YouTube, welcome to yet again another technical uh, video today here with young Ethan. Uh, you got a nickname yet, Ethan? No. 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 I was just telling him he looks like Edward from Twilight. Do you agree, YouTube, or not? He says no. I said, who would you go to a Comic Con dressed up as? It's gotta be Edward. Seriously. How much does he look like Edward from Twilight? <laughs> just, you just, just look at the camera for us one time. <laughs> look at him. Yeah, just pale the face up a bit. You're pretty much him. So guys, what we're talking about today, um, as you see from the title of the video, is top roll v top roll. What are the, the variations that you're going to expect, in, in particular when one guy, clearly this guy, is the taller, longer armed, bigger hand top roller. Does that mean that I have to hook? No. There's plenty of options to be the shorter arm top roller. And what we're going to go through is what strengths will determine the outcome and where the battle is most likely going to be and if you are a shorter top roller preparing for a longer top roller you're going to know where to put your main efforts and vice versa if you're the long guy wanting to prepare for some badass short top roller you're going to know where to put your main efforts as well so traditionally speaking top roll v top roll you're going to see the taller guy with the low hand and that's simply because webbing has to be even and i can only reach up so far so for me to match the height of him, I'm going to be front of the pad. You can see that Ed, that Edward is at the. <laughs> you can see that Edward is at the back of the pad, Ethan. Uh, we're going to call you Edward for the rest of the show. You can see that Edward's at the back of the pad there. He's drawing on his vampire skills, and he has matched the webbing height um, with a low wrist. Now, if we are just if we just naturally close our hands from here, okay, I have my knuckles up. He has his knuckles down, so he's not going to try to reclaim knuckles up after the go. Okay, just be aware that if he did fight for knuckles up, it would mean that I'm I no longer really have access to a top roll at all. I would be doing something else. So, with his wrist down, I have access to a wrist up posting style top roll. He has access to a dragging style low hand top roll. Now, what are the critical pressures in this? Typically speaking, the critical pressures, we're going to have his ability to contain with fingers through not only tabletop pressure, but also chop, demonstrate chop for me, which is that downward movement. And that is against my ability to go directly back on the bicep. Now, the other component is his ability to have stable pronation in his wrist relative to my ability to flex my wrist in a cupping motion. My pronation is largely okay. He's not attacking my pronation. He's not trying to carve in. He's not doing that. So my pronation doesn't need to be activated. Likewise, he's, what am I not threatening on you? I am threatening that. I'm not really threatening your cup either because he's not trying to get it. So I'm trying to threaten his fingers and his rotation. He's trying to threaten my bicep and my cup. So if you are, let's talk about the, the short guy first. The thing, the critical strength for me that I'm, when I'm negotiating my grip against the taller low hand top roller is the wrist flexion. Wrist flexion is the most important thing here. And the reason is as the deeper I get my wrist flexion in, the pin root of the top roller becomes longer. Okay, if my wrist flexion fails, he can go straight sideways. So wrist flexion is the most important, in my opinion, if you are coming up against a taller top roller. Here's another problem. Taller top rollers can disguise threat very, very effectively. It's hard to disguise your threat as much when you are the short guy. And often, think to people like Jordan Davis, he will let someone get knuckles up. He will make them think that they're just gonna roll straight over here with their top roll. And as they initiate, he turns on the lats and turns on the superior chopping motion and it quickly disengages the cup. I still to this day cannot, for the life of me, top roll against Jordan. It's, he will laugh at me. He literally looks at me and giggles. Even Edward's starting to giggle at me these days when I try to <laughs> top roll. So very similar ratios um, against Jordan. So if you are the tall top roller and you want to be able to prepare for a super match, you've got to recognize that this, the pronation versus the wrist flexion is probably the battle that matters most. So whoever either is just A, too strong there, or B, disguises and threatens in other places, 
so that you can then win this battle, will win the match. So this is why you'll see a low hand top roller move defensively. He's doing that because he thinks if he goes on the offense, he will lose the critical battle of pronation versus cut. And this is why also you'll see a short, short guy not go too hard on his back pressure because back pressure will take his effort off his cut. So he will stay at the front of the pad for longer, looking more like a hooker and then only rolling once he's got control. So let's have, let's have some, let's out of straps, self-initiated ready goes to see how this plays out in real time. All right. I'll be a short top roller, you'll be a long top roller. Move, ready, go. <sighs> Hard to hold on, you can see there what happened then. My, I posted up, I tried, I tried to win this battle. As soon as I sensed I couldn't, I went all back in my post. He, Edward, also realized that his fingers couldn't hold on to my back pressure. We slipped. We're going to change the rules now. No slipping's allowed. Neither of us is allowed to slip. We slip, okay. we get our asses kicked. All right, ready? And I must top roll, I must top roll, no hooking. No slipping, no hooking. <laughs> Shit. Oh, that's close to... Okay, we'll pause there because it's ended in a dumped wrist scenario where it was going to be a finger battle. Um, but you, you could again see then, I couldn't get the pronation down, he couldn't get the pronation out, and then it became our, our secondary battle, which is back pressure versus drag. And then we climbed up on each other's fingers and it was all weird. Um, <laughs> let's go in the strap. Where is the strap? We haven't even put this on today, it's amazing. Yeah, really it's weird. really weird. We've had, a, we've had like an hour <laughs> training session prior to this. Haven't put the strap on. Again, if I'm strapping, same thing. The short guy's going to have knuckles up to get the webbing height the same. And it's going to be his pronation versus my wrist flexion. Plus his drag versus my rising back pressure. Just whilst we're at it, back pressure. A lot of people get in arguments over what is back pressure. There's dragging back pressure, there's rising back pressure. There's combinations of the two put together. It's all back pressure. If it's taking your opponent away and onto your side of the table, it's back pressure. All right, here we go. Top roll only. Ready to go. <laughs> He's gonna giggle soon. <laughs> This is why. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't like the top roll against good top roll. Okay. We all know that Edward's a pretty badass dude, so <laughs> let me get that again. But you can see why the low hand top roll, what he won critically then was I couldn't threaten his fingers at all. The strap has enhanced his ability to drag, and lats and rear delts combined are way stronger than a bicep. With me only using bicep as a form of back pressure and trying to just cup. I can't print. I can't, simply can't print it because of his superior height. So I must win this battle. Um, this time I'm gonna put less effort on the back pressure. I'm just going all in on cup. <laughs> Ready to go. <clears throat> you can see his pin roots had to change. <clears throat> I still got top roller. <laughs> Top roll, get that wrist back. It's coming. It's coming. I'm getting tired though. He's laying traps now. He's relaxing and trying to get me to make the wrong move. You see there, I had to transition to kind of a little bit of a press as well. But fascinating stuff. Top roll v top roll. Um, it's a common battle, but it's, it's you don't often see short guys do it. There's been a few in history that are amazing at it. First people that come to mind for me are Yana Samlins, Vlad the Destroyer, for current arm wrestlers that truly execute this well. Boss top rollers because they have amazing wrist flexion, amazing back pressure. Doesn't matter how tall you are. When you grip them, you're like, oh no. Their static threat feels amazing. Um, 
good examples of current long armed top rollers. For me, uh, Jordan Davis is always my example because I see it all the time how good he is. But on the elite level, you got people like Amis Gasparini, amazing low hand top roller, very technically proficient. Probably the best at it, in my opinion, globally. Um, but of course, Vitaly Lelayton, another one. Less technical, but just super strong. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Ed, would you enjoy it? You get some of that? It's yeah. one, all, one all between yeah, you and me, yeah? yeah? We, we might have to have the decider after the camera goes off. For sure. Um, <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys. See you next time. <laughs> yes, that's a bet! <laughs>